this sample video is going to go over solving first order separable differential equations. These are extremely important equations in both introductory calculus classes and introductory physics classes. So the first example we're going to look at is going to be the idea of exponential growth. We're given an equation dy dt equals 3y which describes the rate of change of the population and this is something where the rate of change is proportional to the population itself. So y of t is the population of the bacteria as a function of time. We're also given the initial conditions that when t equals 0, the initial population is 15. And so we're going to learn how to solve an equation like this using separation of variables. And the reason that this is called separation of variables is we can transform this e equation to an equation that has dy and y on one side of the equal sign, and it has dt on the other side of the equal sign. It's something that on both sides of the equal sign we're going to be able to use simple integration, which is a reason that it's taught in introductory calculus classes. So it's separation of variables because we're able to separate the y and the t variables um, and just turn this into simple one variable calculus problems. So if we have this equation dy dt equals 3y, the first thing that we need to do is separate out the y and the t stuff. So the first thing would be to divide both sides by y and multiply both sides by dt. This would give me dy over y equals 3 times dt. So these are two equations that you might see in an introductory calculus class. Now, if you have 3 dt and you wanted to solve for t, you would integrate that. If you have dy over y and you wanted to solve for y, you would integrate that. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to take this, we're going to integrate both sides. Again, because the 3 is a constant, it can be pulled out in front of the integral. And so these are both very simple, straightforward integrations. So the integral of dy over y is the natural log of y. And the integral of dt is just t. So this is 3 times t. And because these were indefinite integrals, we need to add a constant. But we only need to worry about adding the constant to one side, because if you add it to both sides, you can subtract it over, and the constant on the right-hand side that I have there would now just be the two constants put together. Now, this gives us an equation that has the natural log of y. It doesn't have y. So to find y, we need to undo the natural log function. We need to understand the inverse functions. So the exponential function, e to the x, is the inverse of the natural log function. And so we need to apply that exponential function to both sides. We need to exponentiate both sides. So that would be taking e and raising it to each side. So we have e to the natural log of y equals e to the 3t plus the constant c. Now, before I take care of this left-hand side, I want to rewrite the right-hand side a little bit. So e to the 3t plus c, if we understand our rule of exponents, this can also be written as e to the 3t times e to the c. e to the c is still a constant.
And to make things simpler, I'm going to replace e to the c by a new constant, a. It's not something that you have to do, but it's the more conventional way of writing things. Um, to trying not to have a constant raised to another constant times another constant. It's just trying to group all of the constants together. Just like we only had a constant on one side of the equal sign because we could combine constants together. So now we can look at this. e to the natural log of y is just y. And then this here is a. So we have a times e to the 3t. Now, this would be a general solution to this equation. Um, it doesn't take into account our initial conditions, but when you have the equation dy dt equals 3y, any equation of the form y equals a e to the 3t is a solution to that differential equation. And any constant of a is going to work, and it, if you take the derivative of that with respect to time, you would get 3 times the original equation. If we want to take into account the initial conditions, we need to use the fact that y of 0 was 15. And that will allow us to figure out our particular solution. We're able to figure out what the constant a is in this equation. And so y of 0, which is 15, would be a e to the 3 times 0. So e to the 0 is 1. So this tells us that a is 15. And so if we substitute that back in, we get that y as a function of time is going to be a, 15, e to the 3t. And that would be our population y as a function of time, taking into account the initial condition that when t equals 0, the population is 15. So again, this is referred to as the particular solution. This equation right here that had a in it is the general solution. The general solution is the generic situation, the generic solution that takes, that does not take into account the initial conditions. The particular solution is the one that does take into account the specific initial conditions that you're given. And so this if we were just to graph this out, this would be a simple graph of e, you know, 15 e to the 3t. It's just an exponential growth type thing. So for something like this, the population of the bacteria is not going to grow at a linear rate. As time goes on, it gets bigger and bigger and bigger, and it gets bigger more rapidly. Um, the more bacteria you have, the more you have that are able to reproduce, and so you have this population explosion, and it keeps growing exponentially. The second basic example that I'd like to look at would be something where you have exponential decay. And with this one, um, rather than putting in specific numbers, I decided to do this one in terms of variables. So here we have y of t representing a radioactive isotope as a function of time. And we're going to let y at t equals 0, we're going to call that y0. So that is a particular constant. And we're letting the rate of change of the amount of isotope 
dy dt equal negative ky. So k is another constant. The difference between this and the last one, the only difference, is that this dy dt is negative. Um, and this is going to cause the exponential decay. And so we solve this the same way. We're going to use separation of variables. So we would have dy over y would equal negative k times dt. And again, we integrate both sides. So we have the natural log of y equals negative kt plus a constant c. We exponentiate both sides, so e to the natural log of y equals e to the negative kt plus c. So this gives us that y equals e to the negative kt times e to the c. Again, we're going to call e to the c a. So we have that y equals a e to the negative kt. Again, this is the general solution. And so to find the particular solution, we again use the fact that y at t equals 0 was the constant value given to us, y0. So y at t equals 0 which we are calling y0, is a e to the negative k times 0. Again, e to the 0 is 1. So this says that a equals y0. And so our particular solution, y as a function of time, would equal initial population y0 times e to the negative kt. So if we were to graph this, we have y and t, e to the negative kt is the same as 1 over e to the kt. And so this is something that it would start at some value y0 and it decays down like that. So again, these are basic first order. The reason they're called first order is because if you look at this, the differential equation only has the biggest derivative that it has is the first derivative. So a second order differential equation, the highest derivative that it would have in it would be a second derivative a fifth order differential equation, the highest derivative that it would have would be a fifth derivative. And so we have this first derivative, so it's a first order differential equation. Again, a differential equation is something that has the variable y and derivatives of that variable. In a separate video, this technique is going to be used to solve a particular physics problem that we're going to be looking at.